Shalom, Israel. This is Elder Stephan again. I have another class for you. Um, and it's going to be about King Solomon. As you've been following this series. Again, we have to explain to everyone uh, here at Elders of Israel. We are primarily uh, apostles to the Gentiles. That doesn't mean that we hate Israelites and that we reject Israelites. Um, any Israelites who want to learn are more than welcome to listen in. But our main focus is the Gentiles because the Most High said that the Gentiles had to convert and we had to teach the Gentiles. So now here we get to the end and a lot of these Israelite camps, they're teaching that the Gentiles can't receive salvation. And a lot of the Gen a lot of the Israelites have made up their mind that they're going to follow these camps who are lying to them. Uh, but we know what our mission is and we're doing exactly what our forefathers did. And we have to teach the Gentiles the spiritual law so that we can be redeemed from this place. Everybody else has, has, has had the opportunity to choose. Now the Mosai is extending the opportunity to the Gentiles. And then once those people convert, we're finished. So the reason why we teach the Gentiles is very specific. We teach the Gentiles because that's what Christ did. We're going to keep pulling this scripture over and over until you finally realize that what you've been taught is a lie. The Gentiles can receive the kingdom. They can repent. And the Most High is going to change their name to Israel. He had Christ teaching the Gentiles. Let's go to Mark chapter three. As is now becoming our tradition. Mark chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 7. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea. And a great multitude from Galilee followed him. And from Judea. And from Jerusalem. And from Idumea. Idumea. That's white people. Christ was teaching white people. In that multitude. That that mixed multitude that was following him and beyond Jordan and they of Tyre and Sidon. Tyre and Sidon are Africans. And in this class tonight, you're going to see who the king of Tyre is. He's an African king. One of those kings in the surrounding areas of Jerusalem when Solomon was the king. But he was also a friend of David. And we just read about how David was a teacher and, and from Jerusalem. So he taught Israelites from Jerusalem and from Idumea. He taught white people and from beyond Jordan. And they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they had heard what great things he did, came unto him. So it's telling you he was teaching a lot of different races, a lot of different people, which goes against what a lot of us were taught that the Most High is not going to give salvation to these Gentiles. The Gentiles he's talking about is the Northern Kingdom. We're proving now that that's a lie. Okay, those people are lying. Right. Verse nine. And he spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him for he had healed many, meaning he was healing them with that word, insomuch as they pressed upon him for to touch him as many as had plagues and unclean spirits. When they saw him fell down before him and cried, saying, thou art the son of God. Again, anybody can listen to us. If you are offended by that scripture. Then you need to change the channel. Because here at Elders of Israel, 
we do what our example did. If your bishop or leader or pastor or whomever you're listening to doesn't like what the Bible's saying and they're teaching something different, you're more than welcome to listen to them. We don't consider those people to be holy people. We consider those people to be liars. And the Most High said that he's going to pay those liars back. Just read Jeremiah 23. It gives you an outline what he's going to do to them people. So if you don't want to hear about how all of the other nations are going to be uh, saved and redeemed in the day of destruction and proof that our forefathers taught those people, this not the class for you. You can just go ahead and cut it off, change the channel, whatever. Our mission is to do what the most high told us to do. And that's what we're going to do. We'll go quickly to Acts. Acts chapter 16 and verse 9 is talking about Paul. Okay, the apostle Paul. Acts chapter 16, verse 9. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia. Macedonia is the land that Alexander the Great is from. It's the land of white people. That's what Macedonia is. You've seen uh, renderings of Alexander the Great. They have them in antiquity. Artifacts, all kinds of images of what Alexander the Great looked like. His daddy was a Macedonian. A Macedonian is a white person. Okay, so Paul had a vision of a white person, not a, a black person in a white area. It says there stood a man of Macedonia. That means a white man. And prayed him saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. So the white man in the vision is telling Paul to come help him. Okay. Verse 10. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go to Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. It's telling you, Paul was teaching Macedonians, not Israelites in Macedonia, Macedonians. That's what it said. It didn't say, well, you know, there was a lot of Northern Kingdom spread out in Macedonia. It didn't say that. It said a Macedonian. A Macedonian is a white man. That's what a Macedonian is. Again, you can believe what you want. We're not cheerleading white people and all that other stuff. What we're doing is we're doing what God said do. These men have turned the Bible into something political. The most I say he giving it to everybody that convert and start doing his spiritual law. So. We're going to teach him. That's why we here at elders of Israel teach the Gentiles. Because they need to know that they're going to be redeemed if they convert to the Most High's law. All right. So now let's get on with this class. The last time we met, we were discussing the fact that David is a teacher. And as a teacher, he taught a lot of people. And you're going to tonight. Get an understanding of what the tabernacle of David is. Because the scriptures say that the Most High is going to raise the ruins of that tabernacle. So now, if you don't have spiritual eyes, you probably wouldn't see what it's saying. Just like I had to explain to you spiritually that uh, Peter and James confirmed not to do that kind of law. We explained that. You couldn't see it spiritually. We had to explain what it meant that David was a teacher. You thought he was a farmer or a sheep herder. But actually, 
it was saying that he was a preacher in his father's house. So there's a lot of things that you learn about David and about Goliath, about what giants are and such. And you wouldn't have understood it unless you had the spiritual precepts. It's our job to ensure you get the precepts so that you understand what the Most High is saying. Because these preachers are teaching the carnal law of Moses. And they're not giving the people the understanding of the covenant that Christ left us. That covenant is spiritual. So you have to get yourself in the mind frame of spirit. You have to think spirit. The scriptures say the law is spiritual. It keeps saying it over and over. Christ said he preferred mercy over sacrifice. So you guys don't understand what a lot of that stuff means, but it's basically breaking down to he wants spiritual sacrifices, not carnal sacrifices. And we have to correct this information because many of the Gentiles are watching these men. They think these men are anointed of God. So we have to make these corrections so that they know, no, you're not going to be a slave in the kingdom. No, you're not going to be uh, striped up and whipped and uh, beaten by Israelites whenever the kingdom come. All of that's a lie. The kingdom is spiritual. It's going to be a place of rest. These men are lying in order to boost these people up to get their money. And the people are too stupid to see it. But nonetheless, we're going to go to Job. Job chapter 11, verse 6. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double. When he say double, he means there's spiritual precepts and there are carnal precepts. Wisdom is in the spiritual precepts. He wrote the book where carnally you can look at it and get a carnal understanding. But you can't get the true understanding unless you look at it spiritually. All right. It says that they are double to that which is. Know therefore that God exacts of thee less than thine iniquity deserves. Okay. But it's the primary understanding is the Bible is written two ways. It's written carnally, and that's how they are teaching it in a lot of these Israelite camps. And that it is written spiritually, and that's what we are teaching. Guess what covenant Christ is going to respect? He's going to respect the covenant he left. He left a spiritual covenant covenant. We went through it in Acts 15 in our last class telling you. He said, stop doing the carnal law. He said, what you need to focus on is refrain from uh, things polluted with idols. He said that you should avoid fornication. He said that you should not eat things strangled. And finally, he said, don't don't drink anything defiled with blood. All right. And I explained to you what that meant in the last class. If you need to go back to the last class that we did and you'll get the understanding of what that's saying. It's saying do the spiritual law and look out for the wicked. You can't see the wicked because you're reading the Bible carnally and the wicked are the ones that's teaching you the Bible. All right. So if you get the opportunity, go back, view that class, and hopefully you'll get some understanding. But nonetheless, we're going to move on to Hosea. You have to think spiritual. I have also spoken by the prophets and have multiplied visions and used 
similitudes. A lot of the stuff I'm going to explain tonight is written as similitudes. If you don't know what these words mean, you're going to miss it. I'm going to give you the precepts so that you can understand what it's talking about. All right. I have mo and I have multiplied visions and use similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. The stuff that the prophets wrote was written in similitudes. Two ways. You've learned what they mean carnal. You don't know what they mean spiritual. So you have to open your mind. You have to throw away everything you learned because the carnal explanation is the exact opposite of the spiritual explanation. Everybody's doing the carnal law when Christ is going to judge you on the spiritual. So learn the spiritual so that you can be redeemed when Christ returns. All right. So now let's get started. So we're going to be going to first king. Because there's a story in first king that tells how Solomon began his reign by converting the trees of Lebanon. Now, if you've been watching us for a little while, you know what those trees are. Trees are men, right? And we're going to show it to you again. But you have to be able to see it. You've got to put your spiritual thinking caps on so you can see this thing. This history is about two kings working together to build the house of the most high. All right. If you look at it carnally, it's talking about how Solomon built the temple in Jerusalem. But spiritually, it's talking about a much more important house that was being built. We're going to go to first Peter. Because we have to do this again. First Peter, chapter two. Verse one. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. So when you hear the word milk, it means the word. OK. That ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. All right. To whom. Coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. This is the part what Solomon and Hiram were doing. Verse 5. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Christ. So it's talking about building a spiritual house. Carnally, Solomon built a temple, which is carnal, a building. But he also built something spiritual. And you about to learn about it right now, because this is what we have to do. We have to build up a spiritual house because that's what the Most High said we would do in the last days. Okay. If you look spiritually, you know that you're going to notice that Hiram, king of Tyre or Tyre, depending on how you pr pronounce it, you recognize soon he's not an Israelite. Y'all see that? So, again, when the spiritual house was built before under Solomon, Israelites and Gentiles built the house together. Y'all see that? Hmm. 
The Israelites, which was Solomon, and one of the particular people who helped him build it was Hiram. He's from, he's the king of Tyre, or Tyre, depending on how you pronounce it. But he's a Gentile. He's an African. Y'all see that? Hmm. Okay. The Bible is written spiritually to allow us to see what will happen in the future. David conquered many nations at the edge of the sword and he converted them to the most high doctrine by force. That is the tabernacle he left Solomon. When he converted all those people, all those people came together under the most high, under David's house. Y'all see that? Okay. Israel was at peace with all nations once David passed the kingdom to Solomon. The scriptures state that the day would come when the Most High would rebuild the tabernacle of David, which included all the nations he conquered and converted to the Most High's law. Non Israelites. Gentiles will work with Israelites to raise the tabernacle or house that David set up just like Solomon and Hiram did. In order to do so, we will need to possess. The word possess means educate. Elder Samuel is going to give you all some background on that possession. We will need to educate prophets to include the Gentiles to spiritually war against the giants that rule the world today. Y'all got that? So, all of you that are listening, this is to let you know there is a reason why we are giving you this information. The Most High gave us the understanding. It's our job to teach everyone, Israelite and Gentile, to war against these lying prophets. The thing is, they have no means to defend themselves against this doctrine because we can prove the lies. And if you've been following along, a lot of the stuff we're saying, you probably never heard it before. Trust me, they ain't never heard it before either. And that's why they're watching us every single word. But when you're telling the truth, you don't have to remember the lie. So. Let's get on with it. The most High said before he was going to raise up the tabernacle of David. We're going to Amos so we can get an understanding of this. Amos chapter 9 and verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. That's what we're doing right now. And close up the breaches. Thereof, and I will raise up his ruins. It's in ruins now because these prophets did not teach the Gentiles. And I will build it as in the old, in the days of old. Verse 12. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. That word possess means something. We're going to get it. And of all the heathen, that's the other Gentiles, right? So they're going to be possessed. Which are called by my name. He's going to change their names to Israel. Saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes 
him that soweth. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people. I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste city. That's what we doing. He done brought again the captivity. All right. And inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards. Vineyards is ministries, churches. Okay. They're going to get this doctrine and they're going to start teaching it. And drink the wine thereof. The wine that, that we teaching is the wine that, that Christ is talking about. We teaching his doctrine. Wine is a doctrine. That's his doctrine. All right. They shall also make gardens. Gardens is a ministry. The churches, the doctrine, that's the garden. And eat the fruit of them. You're going to learn from what we're telling you. You're going to learn from this doctrine that we're giving you. And I will plant them upon their land. The land is the ministry. And they shall no more be pulled out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord God. Okay, we're going to stay committed to this doctrine. All right. So let's see if we can't find some examples here. All right. Precepts to back up what, what that scripture just said. Let's get this possession. So you can understand what's possession talking about. Possession ain't talking about all of the heathen and the, and um, all of the heathen and the Edomites are all going to be uh, slaves. And, you know, they're going to get striped up. They're going to get work from work from sun up to sun up. Gonna be peeling grapes and all that other stuff. They ain't talking about that. You don't understand what possess mean because you're looking at the thing carnally. Carnally possess means to own something like a slave, physically own something, and brutalize them and all that other stuff. Cause that's what happened to us. But we got double because we didn't do what the Most High said. All right. So that's why we went into slavery. Because of our disobedience. It was our fault. You have to take responsibility. For what you did. Most I told you to do something. You didn't do it. You got punished. Now you got the chance to make it right. Make it right. Matthew 8. Verse 28. And when he was come. To the other side of the country. Of the Gergesenes. There met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man may pass by that way. Y'all see that? When it's talking about possessed, it's like a mental thing. The Most High's doctrine is going to possess the people who repent. You're going to hear this doctrine. You're going to say, that sounds right. Then you're going to stop doing what you're doing. And you're going to start doing what the Most High told you to do. That's going to kill the old man. And you're going to be possessed with this understanding. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to go teach it to every creature. Right? So that's what possessed means. He said he was going, uh, he was talking about the ones that we could call by his name. He going to change your name to Israel. We're going to Isaiah 56. So that you know, we ain't playing games over here. We ain't juggling. We ain't pulling a rabbit out of a hat. You know, we ain't playing three card Monty. Everything I'm saying is written in this book. So if you want to continue to believe them lies that these people are doing, doing this sleight of hand, you more than welcome to. But I'm telling you, the Most High said he's going to change the, the, the Gentiles name to Israel. We about to read it right now. Isaiah 56, verse 3. Neither let the son of the stranger. Who's the stranger? That's the Gentiles. All right. That have joined himself to the Lord, that convert to the Lord. Speak, saying the Lord hath utterly, utterly separated me from his people. No, you ain't going to be separated from his people. You going to be his people. He going to make a people out of you. Neither let the eunuch 
Say, behold, I am a dry tree. A tree is a man. A man that's dry is a man that ain't got no understanding. All right. So. He's saying if you. Are a eunuch, right, you don't have a congregation or you ain't teaching nobody, you don't have any understanding. You still can get the kingdom if you learn. OK. But thus says the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath if they convert and choose the things that please me, which is to do his spiritual law and take hold of my covenant. See that? Verse five, even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and daughters. Y'all see that? I will give them an everlasting name. What's the everlasting name? Israel. Prince got power with God. <laughs> That's the name. That shall not be cut off. It's going to be yours forever. If you continue to follow the Most High's covenant. Also, the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord now, again, we get all of these comments about trying to save your slave masters and all that other stuff. When the Most High talking about prepare slaughter for his children, he talking about the followers of the wicked. He ain't talking about the carnal seed. He's talking about the people who following these wicked kings and pastors and bishops. And such. He ain't talking about just because you was born under Esau, you automatically got a death sentence. That ain't what it's saying. Children means followers. That's what it means. All those people y'all following saying they your spiritual fathers. That means you are their children. And in that day, if you ain't following what Christ told you to do, He's saying pre prepare slaughter for you. Don't think that just cause you the seed of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, that you safe cause you doing Moses law. No, if you're not doing what Christ is saying, prepare slaughter for you. Believe what you want. Also, the sons of the stranger. That join themselves to the Lord. So all of those people who are not Israelites, the Gentiles that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taking hold of my covenant, even them will I bring to my holy mountain, his congregation, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will I uh, shall be accepted. The sacrifices when you sacrifice that old man, yes, upon mine altar. His altar is that doctrine that we teaching. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. That's what it say. They're going to get the name of Israel. So it was mentioned um, in other places in the Bible as well about raising up this tabernacle of David. We're going to go to Acts 15, verse 16. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof and will set it up. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who do who doeth all these things. The Gentiles going to get his name. He going to raise up that tabernacle of David. David was converting all nations. They got it again. Isaiah 58. 
He keeps saying he's going to raise up this tabernacle of David. Verse 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden. Y'all understand what the garden is. And like a spring of water. Y'all know what the water is. Whose water fail not. Y'all going to have all kind of understanding. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. <laughs> thou shalt raise up the foundation of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. That's who we are. We repair repairing these breaches. The restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. He going to raise up that tabernacle if you convert to his covenant. That's what that's saying. All right. Now that you have some basic background, let's begin to tell of our forefather Solomon, who was also a great teacher like his father David. Solomon was in the family business. We're going to give you a little background here on about, about Solomon. Now, you know a little bit about Solomon, but you don't understand what the words are saying about Solomon. So we're going to give you the spiritual understanding You've already learned about how rich he was and how all these people loved him and he had all this knowledge and, you know, he had so much wealth and all of this other stuff, right? But they ain't telling you what that stuff means spiritually. But we about to get it for you. Pay close attention and make sure you write down these precepts because it's important that you're able to, to keep the precepts so you can keep it together. Whenever somebody comes and they, they start asking you what something means, you want to be able to tell them what it means. Okay? So, we're going to go to 1 King uh, chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 21. Just to give you some, some background, um, is going to explain to you about his reign over all the surrounding kingdoms and how he did it, uh, about his uh, provisions. He's talking about basically how he studied, right? You're going to learn what it means to eat. We already explained it. Um, it's telling about he had great wisdom and was capable of understanding many doctrines and, and many deep parables. And it's going to tell you also that Israel had a lot of churches back in the day. All right. Well, let's go on ahead and start reading. We're going to start at first Kings chapter four, verse 21. And Solomon reigned over all kingdoms from the river unto the land of the Philistines and unto the border of Egypt. They brought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. So those people was converted. David had converted all those nations. Y'all see that? And Solomon's provision for one day was 30 measures of fine flour, three score measures of meal. Hmm. Well, he sure was eating a lot. 10 fat oxen, 20 oxen out of the pastures, and an hundred sheep, besides harps and roebucks and fallow deer and fatted fowl. Mm. For he had dominion over all the, re all the region on this side of the river from Tip, Saw, even to Azar. 
over all the kings on this side the river, and he had peace on all sides round about. Hmm. So it was saying that he was eating a lot. Say he had uh, all these fine measures of flour and meal and fat oxen, 20 oxen out the pastures. Y'all starting to figure out what some of this stuff mean, right? But we're going to go to Leviticus chapter 11. We keep going back here and we're going to keep doing it till y'all understand what it's saying. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever part of the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts, that shall ye eat. So whenever it's talking about eating, it means learning. All right. When you see eating, it means learning. Uh, you get an understanding. Solomon was getting understanding. Let's see who he was getting understanding from. Ten fat oxen, 20 oxen out of the pastures. You know, pastures is land, ministry, doctrine. It's telling you. Solomon was being taught by all these different teachers. He had the capacity to remember a lot of stuff. All right. But he was really, really smart. But he studied a lot. That's why it's saying how many of these different types of 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 uh, lawful cloven footed beasts he was learning from. Y'all see that? We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So you understand what meat is. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. Guess what? Solomon could bear that meat. <laughs> he had a lot of people teaching him, and he could remember all of those deep parables and such. Verse 25. And Judah and Israel, this is 1 Kings chapter 4, verse 25. And Judah and Israel dwelt safely. Every man under his vine, under his fig tree, from Dan even to Beersheba, all the days of Solomon. So y'all know what vine and fig trees are, right? We're going to go to Mark chapter 8. You know, when it talks about trees, it's talking about men. All right. So it's telling you he had all kind of teachers throughout Israel. All right. Mark chapter three, verse 24. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. So when you start talking about plant life, vines, trees, uh, uh, cedars, fir trees, sycamore trees, all that kind of stuff. Tree, 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 tree. It's talking about men. But in this context, it's talking about men who are teachers. So he had a lot of tur uh, churches from Dan, from the land of Dan to uh, Beersheba. He had a lot of churches in the kingdom when he, he was, whenever he was reigning. So now we're going back to 1 Kings 4, verse 26. And Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. Now, that don't necessarily mean what you think it means. When it's saying he got 40,000 uh, stalls, it's talking about 
he had stalls for 40,000 uh, uh, horses. It means that he actually had a stall is like a house. All right. So a lot of times you're going to see things like cave, tent, house, palace. Those words, they mean something. And oftentimes they mean a church. Okay. A ministry, a, a ministry, a doctrine that the people of that particular house follow. So he had 40,000, he had uh, stalls for 40,000. That's a church. That's a congregation. So he's saying 40,000 people will talk. Horse. When you see a horse, horse or cattle, flocks, and they mean something. Remember what the Most High said. We're going to go to Ezekiel. 34 and 31. So you know what horses are. All right. Ezekiel 34 and 31. And ye my flock. The flock of my pasture are men. And I am your God, saith the Lord. When he says men, he's not talking about sexual men. He's talking about humans. Humans. Okay. He's talking about humans. The Bible is written in the masculine form. Okay. But when he's talking about a man, he ain't saying that women ain't worth nothing. Women have equal inheritance to men. Okay. When he's talking about men, he's just saying whenever he talks about sheep, asses, horses, and all these other things, he's talking about followers. The flock of his pasture are men. We're going to go to Genesis 47. You're going to understand that a lot of this stuff that's written, you can't get to understand them because you don't know what the words mean. Because you don't know how to go precept upon precept. Genesis 47 and 16. And Joseph said, give your cattle and I will give you for your cattle if money fail. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph. Cattle is flock. Okay. And Joseph gave them bread, understanding, in exchange for horses and for flocks and for cattle of the herds and for asses. And he fed them with bread for all their cattle for that year. He's telling you cattle, horses are cattle. All right. We're going to go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 9, verse 3. Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous murrain. Horses, asses, camels, and oxen, and sheep. They are considered cattle. All right? So the Most High is telling you that's the flock. A horse is a follower. A horse is a follower. Okay? So he's a follower in a church. So whenever he's saying he had stalls for 40,000, it's letting you know. For 40,000 horses, it's letting you know. Those horses are people of his flock. All right. Verse 26. And Solomon had 40,000 stalls for horses, 
for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. All right, now you know a horseman is the leader of the horse. All right, so it's talking about teachers. We had 12,000 teachers. But them chariots, you got to understand what these chariots are. Chariots are powerful leaders in the house of the king. All right. So anybody that has a house. If he's got. Captains, powerful leaders that have his doctrines, the Bible considers them to be in chariots. All right. Because they got the ability to roll over people with their knowledge. You understand? So let's get let's go to Genesis 41 so you can get what these uh, chariots are. 